Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sheep Kids Sheared podcast, home of people, politics, and popular culture. I'm your host, Austin Creed, and I want to welcome you into the morning show. So, this morning, I want to discuss something very, very familiar to everybody, but I want to approach it from a different perspective. The question of the day is this, is life a game? Now, there are songs from, you could look at songs from today till next week about life is this, life is that, life is easy, life is good, life is terrible, I'm on the edge of ending it all. There, everybody has a thought about life, whether it be their life, the human experience, all of it. All of it is fair game. But when you really look at it, and I've seen apparently a couple people that actually kind of broken this down as to kind of make a parody on life, whether it's the board game of life, whether it's video games that explore the concept of what most people go through. Now, there are some of you out there who are not normal, like myself. And when it comes to our game, our game is a little more difficult little off the beaten path we don't get to go past we don't get to go you know go past go and collect two hundred dollars which is what most people who are on welfare checks do no 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 no. my friends life's complicated and everyone's life is different even though we all experience life from beginning to end we all have a different experience we all have different parents different environments different life experiences But yet we can all bond around this idea of life. Now, some people value life. Other people gamble on it and are willing to bet it all on one single thing. Kind of going to what Eminem said of if you could have everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or would you let it go and slip away? But I really want you to to contemplate this is life a game is it is your life a game well when it comes down to it there's one aspect of life that i could not not only just one i'm being i'm being ridiculous no 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 there's more than one there's several different overlaps one of them is for those of you who understand this idea of when you first enter into a game, a board game, video game, whatever it is, you always choose a character. Whether it's you choose the boots or the race car from Monopoly, or you choose an avatar that you made on Fortnite, or whether it, whatever it is out there, there's always a version of you that's not really you. And this idea is comparable to the masks that we wear in society. Whether it's we are a chameleon and we have different friend groups. Whether it's we're an online personality and we want to pretend like our life's a certain way when it's not. I actively attempt to not be like that, by the way. I'm very open with what I deal with on the show. I try not to get too, too personal because I I don't want people to try to dox me. But at the same time, we all need to realize that because we're social creatures, we are very malleable to the cultural context we find ourselves in to the society that we're around we tend to want to conform to the society we're in to the environment we're in to the people who make up the environment we're in i guarantee you if you told me the five people you spend the most time with and i looked at their lives what they're doing how they're doing how they speak how they operate I can determine where you'll be in the next 10 years. I guarantee you I could do it because I had to learn that for myself. Just like your mother said that you are what you eat, you will become those who you hang around. Now, when it comes to life being a game, there are obvious buffs and debuffs in life as well. Whether it's you drink coffee in the morning and that gives you an energy boost or you drink alcohol and that gives you a debuff. Or whether it's everybody kind of got go look at let's go back to the game of life, the original game that meant to kind of show us how similar the human experience is for most people. Despite appearances, it could be boiled down to the overall same steps on a board. 
high school, college, marriage, property, misfortune, opportunities, retirement. All these things are pretty comparable to the, to the average person, especially in a Western country. But how do you see life, my friends? Do you see life as something that's good, something that's a journey, something that's painful? Uh, is it a game? Is it a dream? What is it to you? Because there are multiple societies who have contemplated this one single question. And I see life as a strategy game. There are moves, counter moves. There are fun mini games along the road, like dancing, driving, uh, sex, like we talked about yesterday on the show. But one thing that I find really interesting is if you take a good hard look at life itself and society, you realize that people are punished if they win too much or if they lose too much. You know, the other day, I believe it no, it was Thursday. I was talking to one of my teachers. She was talking about public policy and how why certain things are enacted and why people pass the buck and all that kind of stuff in the United States government. So I, I asked myself I asked her, I said, Hey teacher, do you think that society is rigged not for the rich to win, but for the poor to not lose? And then she paused for about five seconds. She looked at me and proceeded to not answer the question. I'm not going to tell you exactly what she said, but suffice it to say, she basically sidestepped the question. And then when I called her out for sidestepping the question, because I, be I caught that crap, I caught that crap. I knew what she was doing. I said, wait a minute, hold on. You're trying to tell me that this is not relatable to this conversation, to what you're discussing? Of course it is. How much money do we spend in the real world? How much money do we spend on welfare? How much money do we spend on public assistance, um, health care? How much money do we spend on making sure that the people on the bottom don't starve? They don't go broke. They don't die of something how much money do you think we spend on that and then she proceeded to tell me hey well, this conversation's over you know for drop it basically and i was thinking to myself wow this is what happens to those of us who ask questions who are brave enough not to sit there and, and take the 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 yuckety yuck and say wait a minute hold on you mean to tell me that my eyes are deceiving me that I should just believe what you say, what the diversity trainers say, what the government says. Oh, hell no. I'm not going to do that. But again, let's go back to this idea of life being a game. When it comes to life being a game, there are rules to every game. And in real life, there are rules both written and unwritten. Just in the Constitution of the United States, there are powers both implied and and um like ex exploit uh, sorry i can't speak right now i'm having a i'm i'm collapsing on air here there are explicit powers and then there are implicit powers in the same way in life there are explicitly explained rules and then there are implied rules and one of those implied rules is you should care about people on the bottom but once you realize that the people on the top, the billionaires, the politicians, do you, you know what's really unbelievable to me? All the Democrat politicians especially, the Republicans are, for all their faults, they're smart enough to know that <laughs> we're not going to talk about taxing the rich. Because they, number one, because it's not going to happen. And number two, because at the minute I actually do that, they're going to pull all the funding for me. Or they're going to move out of my state. Or they're going to move their business out of my state. The Democrats are so stupid. More like the voters are so stupid that they buy into this, yeah, let's tax the rich. Let's eat the rich. First of all, the rich didn't get where they are by being dumb. But it all comes back to moves and counter moves within this game, the strategy game of life. Do you honestly think that if we were to tax the rich that we would be living in a paradise? First of all, who do you think pays for the politicians to get in office in the first place in exchange for favors, in my estimation? 
the rich. It's not the poor people. Things in life don't change. It's the appearances that change. And this all goes back to the rules of the game. Every country has different laws, different regulations, different statutes, different rules. And you have to play by these rules or the enforcers will come and they'll get you. This is why a lot of people have to be careful with the moves they make. Because everybody seems to be making their own moves out here in this game that we call life. But yet, we're all supposed to be wanting the same thing, trying to reach the same goal. But one of the beauties of life is that there's enough for all of us to win in theory. The problem is, it doesn't actually play out that way. But when it comes to life being a game, there's also this idea of life being a dream. And this goes back to Hinduism, Greek philosophy... Uh, Plato's allegory of the cave, you know, certain De um, Descartes' dream argument, uh, Shakespeare writing about Midsummer Night's dream, all this kind of stuff with life almost not being real. There's this idea of life being a game where it's kind of real, but it can be simplified. And then there's the idea of life not even being real, kind of why the Matrix became so popular, is that life is not real. Have you ever, have you ever known someone who is you know, kind of addicted to drugs, or at least they used to be back in the day, and then maybe they used to tell you and say some really out-of-pocket weird things, and you were like, oh, you chopped it up to the drugs, and you didn't really think two, once or twice more about it. But, my friends, life is complicated, and because it's complicated, we try to come up with these analogies to make it make sense. And I firmly believe that to an extent, life is a game. That does not mean that you shouldn't take it seriously. In fact, the opposite is true. What it means is you have more control over your life than you think. Think about it like this. There are certain things in life you can control. For example, you can't control who your parents are. You can't control what you look like when it comes to your race, when it comes to your genetics. You can't control some of those things are just given to you and you're stuck. Now, maybe there will come a time in the future when you can modify some of these things, but something tells me that part of this is just part of the human condition. Now, there are other aspects of your life that you can control, like your image, your reputation, your moves and counter moves that you make in life, your allies that you choose, your enemies, your struggles. You can choose these things. Now, whether you make the choice explicitly or implicitly, again, whether you make it on purpose or the choice is made based on other choices that you made and you didn't realize it, that's a whole nother ball game, my friend. But when it gets down to it, life, yeah, I believe life to an extent is a game. That's not meant to diminish how important it is. It is meant to help you wrap your head around how complicated life can be, but also life can be very simple when you really understand yourself. Because if you understand your character, your strengths, your weaknesses, think about life. Go with, let's think about other games that, are, that we play, right? When you pick a, when you play a game, usually, usually your character's good at one thing and then has a weakness in an, another area, right? Whether it's a first-person shooter game, strategy game, role-playing game. For every time you upgrade a stat, another weakness is also upgraded, right? Because if you're Let's let's go back to a game. I don't know how many of you are actually gamers in the audience. But let's say you're a let's go I love playing Elden Ring. Elden Ring was a great game. Let's go and make an example out of that. Let's say you're going for a warrior build, right? You wanna you work out all the time, you're really putting in that work, you're strong physically, you have good physical genetics, but you're weak to magic. And in other words, you're weak to people who are smarter than you. There are always weaknesses in life. If you're a mage and you're really smart, but maybe you're not the most physically strong, well, then you're weak to people who are physically stronger than you and can close the gap. Who can get to, if they get too close to you, you're in trouble. Again, this is another example of life and games having an overlap. I say this to help you realize that life is, is not easy but it can all it can be more easily understood if you break things down in a way that makes sense to you 
Now, you know what I realized also yesterday? I love doing more audio than visual shows. You know, I look at TikTok, for example, and I view TikTok as like a sewer pipe of garbage that's being pumped to us, mainly from China. They know what they're doing. I mean, how else do you explain that in China, the kids want to be astronauts and astrophysicists, where in America, they want to be influencers and the next Kim Kardashian? I mean, how else do you explain that to me? And yet they're using the same platform. Again, let's go back to this idea of being a game, moves and counter moves. It was Sun Tzu who said that all warfare is based on deception. And that was written and he was Chinese. There's multiple different kinds of warfare. That's a form of informational warfare. The, my friends, there's so much overlap. And I know that some of you might be thrown off by how I jump around from topic to topic. But that's what a train of thought is. And it's kind of a dead art. A free th The free flow of thought is kind of a dead art. Because you have people who need to either need to A, break out a blackboard, or B, need to make a 15 second clip. I could do those things. But when I, I find that when I do this, I have an audio, just audio. I find it way more connectable to my audience because I mean, I don't think of myself as an ugly guy. For those of you who have seen my videos, I don't think me of me as ugly per se. But when I hop on my camera, people will see more as to who I, what I look like. For example, if I talk about race, right? One of the third rails of anybody who's white these days. Because I talk about race immediately, people are going to break out and say, Ooh, what, what privilege or white fragility? Ugh. All this different garbage, right? Again, but it all comes back to when you put yourself on camera, you, it becomes more about your who you are and less about what you're saying. And that's why I don't always have, that's why I don't always use the camera because I find this to be more of an intimate medium. I feel as though you, the listener, and I, or we're in a bar, we're at a restaurant. I feel as though we're having this conversation. And while I don't always hear what you're saying, I can guess as to how you're feeling because I'm telling you right now, I have one of the best, best stethoscopes in the business when it comes to understanding the plight of the everyday experience. I believe it was Rudyard Kipling who said that if you can keep the company of kings but maintain, maintain the common touch, then you will be a man, my son. If you can maintain your head while all those around you are losing theirs, then you will be a man, my son. When it comes down to it, life can be made into multiple different analogies, but I would rather, instead of focusing on every analogy out there, and the reason why I don't want to say it's a dream is because that diminishes the harshness of very, very apparent realities that we find in our lives versus when we see it as a game, we put ourselves as the protagonist. We put ourselves as the, the hero who's going to vanquish the villain. And that villain could be a problem. It could be a person. It could be trying to get to a place or out of a place. It helps put us in the driver's seat of our lives. Instead of seeing ourselves as a passenger or someone who's tied up in the trunk or asleep in the back seat. It helps put us in charge in the driver's seat instead of making us feel as though we're just along for the ride in our own lives. Because that's very dangerous and it only serves to disenfranchise us even further than we already have been by the bums in the government and by the media who try to tell us not how not teach us how to think but tell us what to think every second of every day with their lies and their ability to deceive us and try to control the narratives by putting it forward and, and manipulating it. My friends, you need to understand that there are buffs and debuffs in this game. And by, more than anything else, you need to determine what character you want to be, what your attributes you want, and then you need to go out there and you need to make yourself as strong as possible. That is what life is. Stop 
relying on the herd to save you. Don't get into the mob mentality. Don't become a strength in numbers guy. No, 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 no. That is for the herd. That is for the normies, the oxygen thieves, the people who are out here who are little more than born Democrat voters who are just there to fuel the system and who whose existence is subsidized or insured by the people in power. I don't want you to be like that. I want you to be a free thinker who is able to use their own head to determine their own destiny. My friends, have a great day. I really hope that you take this, you know, little food for thought this morning and you apply it to your life in a way that allows you to be better than you were yesterday and allows you to really contemplate the complexities of life. My friends, God bless you on this beautiful day. Let's win the battle so that we will win inch closer to winning the war. And let's develop a good strategy for the day. Take care of yourselves. I'm out of here. Peace.